Hi, uh, this is like a quick recap what I did like in this Google Summer of Code, um, where I worked on a project finding, uh, finding code clones with Clang. Um, I want to start with like a short motivation slide um, for why we're doing it and what we try to reach with the project. Um, the code you see here is like implementation of a remote desktop protocol. Um, for those who don't know, it's like accessing our computers is some Microsoft thingy. Um, and for those of you who have like superhuman review, uh, code review powers, you already spotted it. There's like a memory corruption in this code. Um, it's here. Um, bit explanation. Um, there's like this char array at the top of the code and there's like the length, you know, typical C arrays. And we have this twice for like allowed users and ignored users. And then we have this S print F and it's like passing one content and the length of another. So we have like memory corruption. You can write memory um, or you can like modify the data and the list of this thing is printing. And this is a pretty nasty bug. It's like security uh, vulnerability. And the question is, um, if you have such a bug, um, can Clang or can we warn about this in any kind of automatic way? And a lot of ways how we can do this, like we can look at the variable names and stuff like that, or we can say, um, I don't know, don't you see, use like C++ strings, something like that. Um, but another way we can do this is we can look, how did this bug happen? Like why did someone write ignore length instead of um, a low length, which is like the correct variable? And if you look at the history, we see that in the same code file, there's another piece of code, which is strikingly similar, and we actually find our wrong line in this other piece of code. So we can make like some assumption um, that the code was copy pasted because it's nearly the same functionality, once for allowed users and one for uh, ignored users. And the developer just like forgot to like change this one variable and we got this really, really nasty bug. Um, and this motivated us to kind of solve the thing um, in this Google Summer of Code. And we did two things to solve it. One is like Clang now has a clone detection framework and it can find in a translation unit or in an AST um, all nodes that have some kind of similarity and it can do this in a really efficient way. It's like linear space and n log n time. Um, and we spend a lot of time optimizing it, so it's good. It works for things like SQLite, like really big translation units. And you can even dynamically define what's like a similar node. There's like a constraint system that's still under review, so it's not in tree right now. Um, and the detection framework is like available in this error. And we did another thing that like specifically looks for these um, bugs that we just discussed. It's like a checker for Clang static analyzer. And it uses this framework to find for translation unit all similar nodes and then checks the variables if we maybe have a situation like we had before, which results in like really hard to find bugs because the type system is correct and it looks correct, um, but it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty horrible bug. Um, if you look at the checker, what the checker does is it finds the similar nodes and what it then does, it enumerates the variables. So it says the first variable it encounters that is reference is like index one um, or index zero. Um, the next variable, if it's new, it gets a new index like index one. If we already use it, uh, already had it like before, it gets like a, um, an existing index. And then we get like a feature vector of, of this um, clone. And then we can compare these vectors to find if like such a situation has happened. Um, to give an example for this, um, let's go back to like the opening example. Um, what we do on the left side is we say, G user allow, it's a new variable, gets the index zero, see this on the left. Then G user allow length, also new, gets a one. G user allow, we already had this, gets a zero. Um, and now we got to like the, the bad line and we already um, knew we get like a new index because it's a totally new variable. It's like the ignore length, we never had this in this piece of code. Um, and we do the same for the, um, for the other clone and we get a different vector. And if we get a different vector, we have like a good hint that something is wrong here. And what we can do now is we can actually use with the help of these vectors, make a really good diagnosis, what is wrong and how we can fix it. Um, this bug that you see here, it was actually found by like the code or like the checker that we produced in this Google Summer of Code. Um, it found it like in CERN's uh, root library. And not only did it find a bug, um, but it also suggested the correct fix. Like I said, instead, um, use, don't use G user ignore length on the left side, but it actually said use G user allow length. So not only find the bugs, it could also like suggest a correct fix for the user. 
Um, that sounds really cool, but it's not production ready yet. Um, we have a few things that still need to be solved. For example, there are mathematical algorithms that do really strange stuff with variables, like switch them around and like for a reason, like it's not, um, it's on purpose. Um, so if you report it, that's a false positive. And then we have things like multiplication where the order doesn't matter. Um, and if you report here pattern errors, it's also false positive. So false positives are a problem still. Um, but a good thing is what we are trying to solve is like a classic um, classification problem. Like we say, we have this clone, is it like valid or not? And to detect this and to get this checker production ready that we can get rid of such bugs uh, in the future, um, we maybe need your help. Um, because what we want to do in the future is not only we get the remaining patches merged, so graphics and stuff like that, but we also want you, um, if the stuff is finished, to maybe if you scan build your, like your hobby projects or your business projects to activate this checker. And then you get maybe or maybe not a list of um, reports that says maybe you should use a different variable here or not. Um, it would be really cool if you could send this to me or someone that's like also work on this project. You find it in the header that I referenced at the beginning. Um, and then we can use like these examples to like set up the classic um, classification thing where we say um, with those properties in a clone it's one thing and with other properties it's another thing and then we can hopefully make this production ready and we're quite confident that we can do this. So thanks for your attention and in about two months when we hopefully get everything merged, um, please try it out and well, report it to me. And if you have questions, just pull me aside gently. Um, thanks. <laughs>